Welcome to Creativity Corner, everyone. I'm your host, Deborah, and with me is my filming compatriot, Don Manuel, and we are here to give you a, I don't want to say review, because I just massively love this, so I'm not really reviewing other than just sharing with you the love I have for this new Lego set 75978 Diagon Alley. I left the box up here so you could see just how huge this set is. It's a gigunda. Um, when it came in the mail, it was bigger than me hefting it down the stairs. It has 5,544 pieces and comes with 14 minifigs. So it's just amazing. I mean, the, the box itself is huge. Also came with 20 bags of pieces. And this, I haven't opened it yet. It says Silencio, keep it between us, uh, bag box number 21. So I thought I would do that with you, um, even though I peeked uh, in these four giant books that are the directions for this. So I didn't rush putting it together. I spent about a week putting it together so that I could enjoy and savor the experience. I was also using it as an opportunity to really... I don't want to say practice some Lego building techniques, but learn some really cool new techniques and, and play around with it. So, and the other thing I wanted to share with you is this little bowl that I have here full of all these little, little, little doodaddies. These are all the extra pieces. It just came with a ton um, of, of extra pieces. And I know uh, Mo Murder Mittens here at Creativity Corner kept wandering through my Lego, which he's ordinarily not allowed to do because we have a Lego room, but I was building in our living room because it was so big. So just a lot of little extra doodads. So I'm going to start down here. Um, and we have here, we have Ollivander's wand shop and scribulus, which is, you know, where you can get wizarding supplies. I love this. I love this a lot. Uh, this new wand box comes with this set and there's just tons of wands throughout the set, but the wand box itself, which is probably a little hard to see, um, cause it's brown, but it's a new Lego piece came out with this set. So, and there are a whole bunch in here, but the only place you can get this wand box right now, and it just covers with a tile, that's the top of the box, but this is a brand new Lego piece. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. And it's also the second set where we get this sort of wing spread Hedwig, who's carrying one of the only printed pieces, which is a newspaper that says the boy who lived on it. The newspapers are printed, some of the windows are printed, and all the rest are stickers. There's one entire sticker sheet for each of the four buildings. So a lot of stickered pieces. And we tend to like printed pieces, but I can understand maybe a little bit why they didn't, because there's just tons, tons of them. So Ollivander's Wand Shop. Um, this is for Diagon Alley, so it has a different front. It is 32 studs wide by 16, so each one of these is a base plate, standard base plate wide. And my favorite part about this build, let me think what my favorite part of each of these was. So my favorite part of Ollivander's was, as I turn this around, this really cool pop-out set of stairs. And it rotates back and forth um, in there. I think it's so, so cool. And then the builds actually to do the wand bookcases are so interesting to me. They, and it actually has like one that pops out and then all the rest are static um, staying in there. So really fantastic. And there's two floors, upstairs, downstairs. The furniture builds were all really interesting and fun to do. And then over here at Scribulus, there's not a lot. There's some inkwells and some quills for sale and a cool upstairs couch. I like it. I like it a lot. So this is our first building. Oh, wait, I have to share one thing, though, because I just fell in love with this. Upstairs in the little room, there is this cool skull piece. 
and it's probably really hard to see because it's white, but it hangs over a little bit with its chin and it's really fantastic. It's a fantastic piece. And we're probably gonna have to look for some of these. Now, an interesting thing, if you're on Lego Bricks and Pieces, looking for pieces from individual sets, you can't get pieces from licensed sets. So we would actually have to go to Bricklink for this, or I would say get another set. But at the price tag of $3.99 US dollars, we're probably not picking up an extra one anytime soon. So I love this, this building. I'll tell you which one's my favorite when we're done. But this, this is excellent. I love it. Ollivanders and lots of nostalgia from the Harry Potters. Okay. Here we have quality Quidditch supplies and the Daily Profit. With the Daily Prophet, we get the Daily Prophet photographer and a little baby Ron. We also get this extra writing desk. Now, when I was reading about it in the books, they said this was so you could recreate the uh, book signing scene if you wanted to, maybe in your, if you have a Lego city or a Lego room or just a, a little Lego diorama, if you wanted to um, recreate the, the book signing scene, you could do that. And so this build has two and a half stories. It's really interesting. There are things tucked away everywhere. The front, these, these windows, these windows were my favorite part of building this building. It was such a cool um, building tricks and techniques and tips and it was fantastic. I, I just, I really love these front windows. Again, lots of sticker pieces. The only golden snitch in the game. So this is the only one you're going to get. I was really hoping for two. Pretty sure Don Manuel was hoping for two so he could steal one from me for a build that he's doing. But this one will stay here. On the inside, really not much going on in the Daily Profit. We have the spider in its web upstairs which takes up the whole upstairs space and downstairs we have a crate full of newspapers really only the front one is printed and the rest is a cool stacking stacking technique so it looks like there's a whole stack of newspapers and then quality quidditch supplies however is jam-packed with stuff i loved building these little uniform displays they were really great and then we also have quidditch uniforms which we don't really see very often in the harry potter sets and these are actually different and unique because they're not in the school colors the house colors for for harry potter so there's some cool new quidditch uniforms in there so really really fantastic two and two and a quarter stories high on quality quidditch supplies this one has my heart a little bit because there's a sweet shop and a bookstore. And I don't think you could put two things together that I love more unless you tucked down Manuel in here somewhere. So uh, we got a sweet shop and a donut. And a, so we've, in the little sweet shop here, my favorite thing, we got Gilderoy Lockhart walking around. I don't really love him, right? So, but were these little chairs. So these little chairs use... The fang pieces, I call them the fang pieces, I don't know, but as legs. So you have this just really nifty little chair, and I just fell madly in love with it. I don't know why, but they're super cool. And then we have Molly Weasley and Mrs. Weasley and our little Harry here, book shopping. They have copies of Magical Me from Gilderoy Lockhart. So that's pretty great. Two stories if you look at the inside. Um, here we have stacks of books, stacks of books, uh, an open book upstairs, which I, I really enjoyed and appreciated. And up here in the candy sweet shop, we have a nice sort of well-worn um sitting area it's very comfy cozy up there and downstairs 
the serving ice cream. There's a sticker with cool flavors on it, like um, bat juice and earwig. If anyone would like some bat juice and earwig ice cream um, or um, chocolate with peanut butter and uh, black beer and raisin. So, uh, so there you have it. So Flourish and Lots and the Sweet Shop. And now we have Weasley's Wizard Supply here. Um, it comes with this little extra, I, I don't know, love potion stand. So I think it's fun and interesting. We learned from Harry Potter, maybe we don't want to be making love potions, but um, this is our love potion stand. It doesn't actually go in the inside the store. It's an extra like the desk. So um, there we have it. I'm not sure what kind of story we'll tell with that in Morrigal, but I anticipate that we'll see something. Here on the side, we have the entrance to Nocturne Alley. And it's pretty groovy. It's a groovy little build, and we have uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Malfoy and Draco, Mal Draco Malfoy there. Favorite part of this, but I don't know. So I'm going to just tell you right up front, this is my favorite building. It was my favorite one to build. There's three stories here. So fun, so colorful when I turn it around, and so challenging. There are approximately... 11 bajillion windows in this one in all different kinds of patterns and this cute little Sorry, mr. We so you it's a little play feature. So the wizard Tips his hat at you as you as you come and go With George and Fred running this place so the colors are great, purple and orange. Oh my goodness, I never would have put them together if I was doing the build. I think it looks fantastic and Morgel's going to love it. Well, then I have to pick up Mr. Malfoy. And then when we turn this around on the inside, it is chock-a-block with color. Everything in here is colorful from the railings, which are insane, to all of the different uh, snacks, fireworks, all of the, you know, little joke things that the Weasley brothers would have for sale. Three floors of that all the way up to the top. It's just absolutely fantastic. I don't know what else to say about it other than it is colorful, it's playful, it's fun, and I just love it. I love this set. So if you've been following along and counting... We've only seen 12 of the 14 minifigures that I told you about. Ooh. So it gives you a little hint to what might be here in our Silencio box. I'm opening it. All right. And so it looks like in here we have a Hagrid and another Harry figure. And I'm going to put this together and transport all this into Morrigal and give you a chance to see where we think, we're pretty sure, 99.9% .9 sure, where this is going in Morrigal and what it's going to look like. So let's go in there and we'll show you this little Silencio surprise and what Diagon Alley looks like in Morrigal. Okay, so we're in Morrigal and this is the build that was in the Silencio uh, 21 box. It is a welcome to Diagon Alley from Rubius Hagrid to Harry Potter. And he, I've never seen this outfit on Harry, so I'm pretty excited about that. And we're probably just gonna keep this special somewhere. And now you can see where we think <laughs> Diagon Alley is gonna go in Morrigal because we're incorporating it into Morrigal as a thing. We actually have a build going on that we can't wait to, to show you, but it will make sense that we have these Diagon Alley builds. We also left space to put a couple of other buildings in here, in the alley. We rearranged, we had a road going right down the middle there. We took the road out and decided to make it an actual alley and put shops in it. We're really excited about it. And it still leaves us room to grow. 
We have a winter village started and we'll fill in that row if you're wondering what's going to happen to the backs there and the backs um, on the other side. We'll also have some builds there eventually. We definitely want room to grow in our Lego city and I think this will allow it to do that. And of course, now that we're in, they're in here, if we decide this is their semi-permanent location, we will need to do some additional detailing and create some scenes and all that fun stuff that makes a Lego city a Lego city. And if you're sneaking a peek around Morgal for some unreleased footage of what's going on, because so far, if you're looking at this, we've only released Naisa Village and Bapasi in the Beach, and we have the park coming up soon. A whole lot of downtown and everything else in our winter village can be seen. We've been working really hard on Morgel all summer and can't wait to show you. But this Diagon Alley just derailed us from our plans. As soon as we saw it, we knew we had to have it. And we do. And I couldn't be more excited about it. Really. If you can't tell, I couldn't be more excited about it. So let us know what you think in the comments. What do you think of Diagon Alley? What do you think of its placement? Do we put it in a good spot? You have to use your imagination on what it can become as other buildings fill in around it and it becomes a living part of the story of Morago. And with that, we are Creativity Corner and we love bringing you this Lego content. So please like, subscribe, share, comment, do all the things, you know the deal. And remember, together we'll do better. Why? For we are one. And we're out.